Daisy's in timeout mode. <laughs> She's freaking out. It's strange being in an RV park and not being in our RV. We just finished up our Christmas holiday and it was really, really great after we worked out the kids with no water and no power and all that stuff. If you missed that video. We are fully functional yeah. now, yeah, both here and in the RV. <laughs> yeah, and speaking of RV, we are currently getting it ready to go for traveling and hitting the road for 2023, which is super exciting. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna head down to Florida for the RV show to start things off. And we are gonna do a meetup there. Yep, definitely. And be sure to subscribe to our Facebook and Instagram and or to our website, to our blog, so that way you know when the meetup is and we can see you there. Speaking of Florida, we are taking you back to earlier in this year of 2022 when we were wrapping up our Florida travels for the spring end of March. And we're gonna share with you some of the fun things that we did. We started it off with hanging with our friends, Norm and Heather and their son, Gabe. And let's just go to Dade City. Oh my gosh. Hey guys. What's going on? What you got going on under there, huh? Probably not much. Oh my goodness. There's one. It's not hers though. Oh, it's not. <laughs> Oh. She's just keeping that egg warm, that's not hers. There's no daddies around. Here. Nope, no daddies. You sure I talk to you? I'm going to lunch without Chad. It might have sounded funny that I said, I'm going to lunch without Chad. <laughs> As you guys know, if you've been living full time in an RV for a while, you know that it's kind of rare when you get some time by yourself or with just your friends to go out and do things. So, you know, he enjoys being able to do that too. And I enjoy the rare occasion when I get to do that, so. I love her. I love spending 24 seven with her, but it is nice to go do things. He's lying. I do, I love it. He's lying. He's lying. <laughs> I really do. Thanks, babe. Heather and I are gonna go downtown Dade City and meet her mom and some friends for lunch. Beef stew. Yes. <laughs> oh my gosh. Everybody loves the sunshine. Everybody loves the sun. It don't matter where you go in. So I don't know if you remember last time we were in Dade City, but they do have a really nice trail that goes all the way into town, downtown. So we're walking through the neighborhoods right now, but we're gonna cut over, hit the trail, and then walk around, maybe grab a bite to eat or something. Yeah. So we didn't know there was a dog day thing down here to see. Poor Daisy's we'll, missing out. We'll tell her all about it though. She probably wouldn't want to come in now. She, you know, <laughs> she's pretty she scared be, of all the dogs. So. She'd be miserable in this heat. And and it's really high. Yeah. yeah. Let's go look at some dogs. Yeah. Hey, buddy. <laughs> Did I hear you say he's six months old? Yes. <laughs> That's all he wants to do is play. Oh, I bet. Imagine this reading. Yeah. I cut into mine already. I, I busted into my egg. <laughs> this is giant. Yeah. Size of my hand. Oh, look, there's two chads in this shot. This guy. That guy. <laughs> that guy's stalking me.
Go get him. It's okay. Okay, we've had enough on it first. <laughs> it's okay, but it's all right, Daisy. Shoot you know. Daisy, it's okay. I got you. I got you. It's all right. It's coming right for us. Have you ever heard anything so vicious before in your life? It's so cute. I mean, scary. Meeting my daughters today at one of my old stomping grounds here in Tampa, which is, bam, Top Golf. Love this place. You know I don't go anywhere and not video it. I forgot. <laughs> The record I won. <laughs> Another really cool downtown gem in Dade City is Cafe Coco Pelli. It's hard to say. Yeah. Spread your wings. It's one wing. Well, I got this in my hand. <laughs> need to take a nap. <laughs> this thing actually was built in 1916 by Ford Motor Company and was built to service Model T. It's really cool, a very eclectic place. You gotta go there to see it for yourself. treasure we wanted to meet up with our friends Ron and Cindy Lou you guys have seen them several times before mm -hmm. they are our good friends that we met at one of our meetups and we've gone on motorcycle rides with them and went up and visited them in New Hampshire yes yes and they were <laughs> staying at Sun Outdoors in St. Augustine we love St. Augustine and because we kind of procrastinated a little bit, there were no RV sites <laughs> available. Yeah. So we just drove the truck over and stayed it in one of their uh, park models. Yeah. First time staying in a park model RV. I've always wondered what it's like. It's those. a little bit, it was a little bit different for us. And we're going to get into the details of the park model and the park in a little bit. But first, let's get into some St. Augustine fun. So we're at the, what's it, what's it called? Florida Distillery? This is the St. Augustine. St. Augustine's Distillery. Distillery and the Ice House. Ice plant. Ice plant. I get it wrong. No. I get. I say ice box, ice house. I, ice box. Ice plant. You're gonna lock us in the freezer. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it's an adventure. Life's a little tricky when you call in. So we had seen the St. Augustine, it was an ice bar and distillery. Well, it's the St. Augustine distillery and it's connected to the ice plant bar and restaurant. Mm -hmm. So it's all in the same old ice plant building. Yeah, I really like when they take old buildings like this and repurpose them, but keep some of the of the stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Like you could still see like the old crane they used and the, from a ceiling mm -hmm. to uh, grab the ice blocks and move them around and stuff. It was really pretty cool. It's really neat because they really paid tribute to that building's history, mm -hmm. which I loved. And they do a lot of the, the farm to table, the fresh locally sourced food, and the handcrafted cocktails using fresh pressed juices right there. And of course they used the spirits that they <laughs> distill uh, right next door. So it was a really neat vibe and the food was really good. Making me thirsty. Is it time for a drink yet? I'm hungry. You're making me hungry. <laughs> They do offer self-guided tours seven days a week. Be sure to check their website for hours. And they're free tours too, which mm -hmm. is great. Oh, 
along the way, they mix little cocktails. They're like little shot glasses, but they're not straight booze. So they mix it with a mixer because- <laughs> We did the, drive there. Yeah, the distillery does make some of their own mixers too, using the fresh juices and stuff. So it was pretty fun. I think there were four stops along the way where we got to sample some of those drinks, which, mm -hmm. was, which was good. So we're making this with one part of our 80 proof sugar cane vodka one part of our grapefruit hibiscus mix, and then two parts of soda water. It's also gonna have a little bit of lime juice, some cane sugar, and then you're good to go. Gin usually, I'm not a fan, mm -hmm. just because of that pine taste. Yeah. Now you're still gonna get it. Juniper has to be in gin for it to be called gin, but it's not as much there. This gin. Juniper has to be in gin for it to be called gin. That's what's the pine. Oh yeah, that's gin. Juniper. Oh, it does juniper. smell nice though. It smells. Now we keep our juniper berries full, as you see back there. We don't put it in a paste oh, like it most gins. Oh, it does So this one, you see, all 12 of those go in there. So you should get really? one, including three, four to citrus. So you should get a lot of floral notes, a lot of citrus notes. It's actually a really good one. And it's not just the gin you're drinking. You're, you're drinking it with this tonic mix. Of course, like most tours, it does end up in a gift shop. Yes. <laughs> but there you can actually purchase some of the spares or try some that you missed during the tour yeah. if you want to try them. This gift shop had a bar. Yeah. <laughs> We've got one more cocktail for you here. The bourbon old-fashioned. Now, when you're done with this, if you want to try any of our spirits on their own, just be sure to let me know what you'd like to try, because I've got it all, but I'm a terrible mind reader, so I've got everything open. So you say it, I'll spray it. <laughs> now, this Old Fashioned is made with one part of our all-natural Old Fashioned mix, which has all your sugar, bitters, orange peel, everything you'd normally have to muddle is already done. So... Are you getting drunk? This is a evening sipping on porch drink, not a walk around in the daytime. Sydney's going to carry this is, not a, this is not a mid afternoon drink. She's a good big sis. <laughs> <laughs> Since you've made it this far in the video, we would really appreciate it if you would click that subscribe button. That really helps us out a lot. Our statistics show that 70% of you are not subscribed. So come on, get it on would, the ball, click the button. It would really help us out. Daisy says, please, Where is she? she's right there. <laughs> After the distillery tour, we decided to take another tour and walk over to the St. Augustine's oldest house and gardens. Though, yeah, there, right? yeah, yeah. <laughs> Along the way, we had to walk through an area called Lincolnville, which is a historic neighborhood. Mm -hmm. I love doing that. I love doing that in towns houses. like St. Augustine and then Key West and Savannah. Charleston. Uh, yes, I just love walking through the neighborhoods and looking at the architecture and the homes. We just had a great time taking a leisurely stroll. We had never checked out the oldest house in St. Augustine, mm -hmm. and since we really enjoyed the oldest house in Key West, we thought we would check this out. To an all the old houses. All of them. What's behind here? Admission to the Oldest House Museum Complex includes a guided tour of Florida's oldest house, access to the Web Museum, ornamental gardens, a rotating exhibit gallery, surf culture museum, and the Pages Edward Gallery and the museum store. Of course it has a store. <laughs> Every time. The Oldest House is open daily from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. and they have tours that run every half an hour. Reservations for the tours are not required. We just walked in. 
It's a 25 minute tour and docents will lead you through this escorted tour of the house and give you a good overview of, you know, how it changed hands, the different ownership. How they lived. Mm -hmm. And how they built onto it. You get a new camera? Your new equipment. <laughs> You know, it was a house and then it was a tavern and then it oh, was yeah. a house again. <laughs> and they explain all that to you. And it's just really neat. I really love walking through old, the old historic houses and hearing about the history. It's really, it's a really neat thing. And wasn't it right across the street from a barracks when it was a tavern? Yes. So the first floor of this house was built kind of like the old fort there with, with actual coquina. The second story that was added later was a wood frame. After the British took over Florida in 1763, the Gonzalez family left for Cuba. In 1774, the house was purchased by Major Joseph Peavitt. He was an Englishman who added the wood frame second story and also put glass windows into the openings previously only enclosed by wooden shutters. But the evidence of the pivot's wealth are in the glass windows, especially to the left here. Only the very wealthy could afford to have glass windows and closets in the home. So under the British government, if you were wealthy enough to put glass windows in and a closet, you were wealthy enough to pay taxes on it. And they had some of the original glass still in there, and you could tell because it was all warpy Bubbly and stuff. And, stuff yeah. and it was really interesting to to just see how the laws were back then, and, and mm -hmm. you know, ta you know, taxing people because they had windows. Could you imagine? Oh yeah. The third owner, Geronimo Alvarez, added a two-story wing built of a coquina again, I guess, to keep with the original theme of the original structure. You think he built the second floor so he could jump off it and yell Geronimo? Maybe. Maybe. I knew. I knew. <laughs> I was waiting. I was hoping I could get past it before he made a Geronimo joke. But I knew it was impossible. Drummo! No one like I needed you right now. I never had the time of day to say it's crazy. I'll run it over inside. I'll be at the front desk. Thank you so much. Thank this you. is great. I think I know the feeling I'm not okay. Wait. Like a wish and a will. Like a kiss and a That tree is beautiful. Oh, I'm wanting it, please. I never thought I'd find myself going dancing in the morning, daydreaming away every day. I had to pump on my brakes, all the chilling that it takes. I gotta say, I gotta find the words that I can say. Wait, like a wish. that tour we continued walking towards the the busier touristy historic section you know they got that one Saint, road yeah <laughs> St. George Street I think is what it's called We stopped and got some delicious popcorn where they oh, have hundreds billion, of different flavors. Hundreds or billions. It's great. Maybe billions. <laughs> You have my permission to smack them, smack them. <laughs> and then we decided to take our friends to one of our favorite little restaurants ever, mm -hmm. ever, is the Gourmet Hut. I think we've talked about it before. It's just this cute little, tiny little hut. It's literally a hut. And it's you all eat, outside. Yeah, you eat outside, so yeah. it's gotta be a nice day, but it's really just 
unique. Mm -hmm. You sit on the grass, a table, sometimes there's a piano player there. Yeah. And we just shared charcuterie board and cheese plate and some mussels and walked around a little bit more after that. We just love walking around that town. It's mm -hmm. always a lot of fun. Let us know what your favorite thing to do in St. Augustine is. I'm sure we'll go back there because we love that town so much. Yeah, and if you want to see a tour of the fort, we had that in an old video. Yeah, it's been many, many years ago. Mm -hmm. It's probably not a very good video if I were. <laughs> <laughs> so, so maybe we'll do that again. But like I said, let us know if there's anything else you want to see in St. Augustine. Let's get into the RV park and that park model that we stayed in. Daisy's in timeout mode. <laughs> She's freaking out because we are getting ready to leave. We're not leaving you, puppy dog. We're not leaving it's you. Okay. So what do you what do you think of this little rental unit we had? I thought it was a neat, different thing, and I think it worked out great for us as far as staying in the same park as Ron mm -hmm. and Cindy Lou and being right here. And it's less expensive than a hotel would be. Yeah. However, the couple of downsides was there were no toiletries at all, so no soap. Yeah, bring your BYOS. You know, I brought shampoo, but I didn't bring soap because I just kind of thought that. I guess I thought it was like a hotel. And maybe it says in the fine print, but I didn't see it. Yeah. And the bed. The beds, both beds, suck. Really bad. Really bad. For one, the one back here, the main bedroom, is like a twin, maybe? It's tiny. <laughs> Daisy. Oh, look at you, you little nugget. Daisy mm -hmm. says, money big for me. Mm -hmm. So if you guys rent this unit, just know Daisy was here rubbing, <laughs> rubbing her body all over the blanket. <laughs> It's not a twin, it's a double. I thought it was a queen. Again, could be my fault. So I slept out here and- But that pulls out to a sofa bed. Bed. Well, <laughs> let the record show that I said that he could sleep in there, but he said that bed was even worse. Yeah, so. it's so soft. My back would hurt after an hour of laying there watching TV. No, so no I didn't kick him out, it wasn't me. I slept better out here, but every move made a racket like I was building something out of metal. Speaking of racket. Oh yeah. The, where's the AC unit? It has these two part units where it's got uh, an inside unit and an outside unit. They're very energy efficient. Yeah. But the unit on the outside isn't mounted well and it rattles, it vibrates the entire wall back there. Yeah. So if I run the AC in here, her wall vibrates. Yes, and so that was... Luckily, it's been cool. So this model, I believe, was $128 a night. And the fact that Rod and Cindy Lou are just down the corner. Yeah, that's a good option when we travel, mm -hmm. if we need dog friendly to look for places like this. I know, I like it. With bigger good. beds. It's strange beds. to be here without our RV. Yeah. I don't know how many times we said, oh, well, we have that. And then we're like, no, we don't have that with us because we don't have our RV. <laughs> yeah. Like I mentioned, we stayed at Sun Outdoors in St. Augustine, formerly known as Compass RV Resort, in case you know it by that name. And it was a nice park. Looked very nice. They had plenty of full hookup sites, back end sites. They do have different sections in this campground. So the Oasis was where Ron and Cindy Lou were staying. That's a higher tier, more expensive, but more it's space. all paid. Yeah, it's bigger sites, mm -hmm. paved sites, which is really nice. What up, Buttercup? Smile, you're on changing lanes. <laughs> they have some sites that just have a little paved picnic area, but gravel parking site. Mm -hmm. So they have a bunch of different types of sites. Please be careful because it doesn't show on the park map, but there are quite a few buddy sites. So if you're not familiar with what a buddy site is, it's basically when one site goes in this way and the other site goes in this way, that way your fronts are facing each other, which can be great if you're with friends yeah. and you have a buddy, but if you don't know those people and they're taking up all the picnic table areas yeah. <laughs> or something, you know, it's just, it can be, it can we've be awkward. Had that, yeah, we've had that happen. Just watch and make sure that you're not getting a buddy site if you don't like those. This campground has a ton of amenities, as you can imagine, it's Florida, so pool and walking trails and a nature trail, all kinds of stuff. This is Ron and Cindy Lou's, one of their favorite places to stay. I think they go there every year. Mm -hmm. It was very nice and we can see why. 
It feels strange that we're wrapping up this video and leaving Florida. In reality, we are getting ready to head back down to Florida. <laughs> yeah. So we're really busy right now. He's got a lot of projects going on with the new RV. I'm working on organizing, decorating, all that stuff so we can hit the road in our new 410. Mm -hmm. Next week, we'll have some project videos for you. We got to do some of those initial installs and things, and we're going to share all that with you next week. Don't forget to subscribe and like. Everybody loves the sun.